There's this big culture of fishing in Key West and they really embrace it. It's a paradise for any fisherman or seafood lover. At this most southern point of the United States, it is the meeting of two great bodies of water, so the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic. So literally in one day, you can go fishing for tuna and marlin, hogfish, one of the best eating fish I ever had, yellowjack, mahi-mahi, yellowtails, lobster, black grouper, wahoo, Key West has all of that to offer, and this is what is so fantastic about it. My name is Valentine Thomas. I'm a professional spearfisher woman, and we're here in Key West to go fishing. I've been spearfishing for about eight years. It was not exactly love at first sight. When I was 14, I almost drowned in the side of France, so I was petrified by the ocean. I brought my roommate Austin because you never spearfish alone. Throughout this video, I'm not only am I filming Valentine, but I'm also her safety. You know, it's just one of those things where you're there to really watch each other's back. Something as simple as an amberjack, if you don't hit the perfect shot, they're strong enough to drown you. I remember the first time that I actually went spearfishing and even though for an outsider it looked very gloomy and very dark and very scary, underwater it looked absolutely beautiful. I told myself, wow, this is one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Spearfishing changed my perspective on a lot of things in life and it changed my perspective on values and changed my perspective on how I see food. This is about connecting to your food, it's about catching it in a responsible way. I do it because I want to grab dinner in a sustainable way and nothing else. I had the chance to, to dive the world and what I was able to notice is how overfished all of our oceans are. Key West is one very good example of well-regulated waters. You have seasons for different fish. If you're looking to charter a boat in Key West, Charter Boat Row is definitely the place to start. You can talk to all the captains and handpick the person you want to go fishing for the day. My name is Aaron Young. I'm a charter captain in Key West, Florida, about as far south as you can go in the continental U.S. I spearfish uh, quite a bit, actually. I do it commercially as well. A lot of people get a misconception that we're these heartless killers. And the reason we do it is because we're very selective of what we take. There's no bycatch. There's no, you know, unnecessary kills. Um, we eat everything that we shoot, and that's one of the reasons I really respect her. And A couple spots in mind. We're gonna head out to the reef and kind of see what the business like and go from there. Hopefully, do a couple of drifts from Wahoo, maybe get on a couple of wrecks, see what uh, see what's going on. Today was definitely not an ideal day when it came to spearfishing. We got probably the coldest day of the year. The sea was kind of rough. The water was very murky, so we decided to start with a little bit of line fishing. The captain has a secret recipe of fantastic sand chum. He's mixing chum and sand with secret ingredients and that makes the perfect bait for fish. So he drops the ball very tight and then it just slowly disintegrates and then that just attracts the fish. The key of spearfishing is being as relaxed as possible. The first thing you do when you jump in is that you want to breed up. There's a thing called a mammalian dry reflex that everybody has. So when you emerge your face in the water, your heartbeat is automatically going to slow down. Your blood is going to start shifting from the extremities to the vital organs. So your body is getting ready for it to hold its breath. The calmer you are on the water, the closest you can get to fish, and also the better you're going to free dive. I loaded my gun, and then I took my first drop. The first thing I saw when I jumped in was 
a gigantic bull shark. You know, it's, it's always a concern, you know, when you're chumming that the sharks will come. Sharks are a big part of spearfishing, especially in Florida. You're putting yourself in an ecosystem where you're not at the top of the food chain. So as long as you respect that and you give them their space, then there's nothing to worry about. Uh, a couple drops later, Valentine finds a school of uh, yellow jacks. So she shoots the yellow jack. And then I pull the fish as fast as I could all the way to the surface and put it in a boat before anything else could have it instead of me. The sharks were kind of just getting too thick and we decided to move. So we headed out to one of the local wrecks. We had a kingfish come by. She made a great shot on the fish. And uh, from there, you know, we kind of were able to just decide that we had enough fish for the day. It was a great day. I actually really enjoy cleaning fish. It's really part of the ritual and it's, you know, you, you catch it, you clean it, and then you eat it. I like to take my time when I do it, so I'm actually very slow because I really want to make sure that I'm not wasting any part and it's, it's, the job is well done. The more you use of it, I think it's, it's just, it just shows even more respect to your catch. Here we are at Cafe Soleil in downtown Key West where we're bringing our catches from today so they can cook it. I've been serving between 50 and 75 different species of fresh caught fish out of these waters for 25 years. These locally caught fish are, it's just not available to most people in most parts of the world. So these are, you know, when I, when I get a nice fish like this in and I smell it, and I know that that fish is just right out of the water, you know? Well, I'm so glad you brought this to me. Let's go cook it. I'm super excited. Cook Your Own Catch uh, started because local fishermen, local guides, and people who live here started bringing me their fish. And uh, it was really an incredible compliment because these folks catch their own fish and they, and they know how to cook. I would take a couple of these guys and then I'd like you to make three little incisions like this, okay? okay? Rub a little olive oil on those. So let's put these on the grill. Boom. A little marking for a little flavor before we toss it in the oven. We're gonna put a little bit more olive oil. I'm gonna take a couple of grilled limes, put that in the cavity. I've got some fresh uh, herbe de Provence. We make our own mixture. And then we're just gonna put this right in the oven. So in 10 minutes, we're gonna check that and see how it's doing. Let's grab the uh, yellow jack. I do want to say that, you know, one of the main things when we do fresh catch is we ask people to fillet the fish because it's really difficult for us when we're yeah, busy sure. at six o'clock to fillet your fish. I think that looks beautiful for a really nice sashimi. See how the grain of the fish is right here? Yes. So what you're going to do is either cut straight or you cut like this. If you cut across it, it'll fall apart. So let's try a little piece of this. Oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> we'll, we'll blacken these. I like how you do your fish very simple. People asking me, what do you put in your fish? Lemon and olive oil. Right. <laughs> the freshness of the fish is really yeah. the primordial thing, and there's nothing better than something that was caught today. Let's toss this on here again, and we're going to give it just a little bit of butter. Ooh, nice. And we really don't want to overcook this, right? No. We're doing a tataki. So now we're going to slice that up. These guys are ready. Table four, serve it, serve it. <laughs> Very good, pick up. <laughs> Am I hired? Yeah, you got a job. This is one of my favorite destinations. You can really feel the, the, the community when, when you come here. And that's for me, one of the, my favorite thing about this place. This is amazing. <laughs>